Brothers and sisters in Jesus, grace and peace are yours. From God our Father, and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. A word from our Savior in John chapter 5, beginning, well, only verse 39. You search the scriptures because you think you have eternal life in them. They testify about me. This is the word of the Lord. Friends in Christ, a long time ago, there was a story about four blind men who each were asked to describe the elephant they had seen for the first time. I shouldn't say seen, the elephant they had experienced for the first time. Each of these blind men had a chance to grab the elephant, and so they told what they grabbed. Maybe you've heard this before, it's a classic. The first man described a great round trunk, almost as if it were a tree that moved like a mountain because he had grabbed the leg of the elephant. The second man said, no, 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 the elephant is like this long, coily snake thing because he had grabbed the elephant's trunk. The third man said, no, not at all, the elephant is like this hanging, leathery rug because he had grabbed the elephant's ear. And the fourth man said, no, the elephant is like this long, spear-shaped thing because he had grabbed the tail of the elephant. Now just imagine four blind men grabbing an elephant in this way. And you can imagine how it is for sinners to try and grab hold of the Word of God. Without recognizing what it is that Jesus just told us. See, the the thing about Scripture is there is so much of it. It is so difficult to get your arms around this thing that we call the Bible. Unless you have this one important key, this all-important life hack, this incredibly valuable information that Jesus Christ himself says. That he, Jesus Christ, is the heart and center of all of the Bible. Now, when Jesus said this, he was speaking to the religious class among the Jews. He says, search the scriptures. Um, I kind of like that translation better. It could say, you search the scriptures. I like sort of the command, search the scriptures, because in them you think that you have eternal life. These are the scriptures that testify about me. The people listening to Jesus Now, it wouldn't have been too much of a surprise to hear the first part of of what he said because they considered the scriptures holy. They had the Bible, at least the Old Testament. They understood many things from the Bible. They considered it sacred. They considered it holy. And to them, the scriptures really were all important. They had the part of the Bible that we'd call our Old Testament And what is more, Jesus is saying what you look for in the Bible, that's actually valid too. It's it's good for you to go and look for eternal life in the scriptures because you can certainly find that there. In fact, it's the one book given from God that leads sinners back to God. And the Bible, of course, is the right place to find eternal life. However, the people that Jesus was speaking to still could not discover and possess eternal life for themselves because they had not found Jesus Christ in it. In other words, they had not searched the scriptures right. They hadn't done it correctly. If they went about searching the scriptures, if they went about investigating the scriptures, examining them, looking closely, asking questions of the text and letting God answer what they, what they read, in scripture and what they'd asked. So as to find Jesus Christ in them, guess what they would have found? They would have discovered and possessed eternal life forever. 
That is the meaning Jesus Christ intended to the Jews. And we get a better sense of that if we read on in John chapter 5. It says, For if you believed Moses, this is Jesus still talking, you would believe me because he wrote about me. But if you do not believe his writings, how will you believe what I say? John 5 verses 45 and 46. In a similar way, the New Testament always speaks about the Old Testament. Like in Luke 24, verse 27, when Jesus is on that road to Emmaus with two of his disciples, this is what he says. Beginning with Moses and all the prophets, Jesus explained to them what was said in the scriptures concerning himself. Or in Acts chapter 10, when Peter was witnessing to the Gentile Cornelius, a soldier, a commanding officer, No less, he says to him, all the prophets testify about Jesus, that everyone who believes in him receives forgiveness of sins through his name. And then in the book of Acts chapter 26, when St. Paul is on trial before a king, King Agrippa, he says, I have had help from God right up to this very day, and so I stand testifying to both small and great. I am saying nothing other than what the prophets and Moses said would happen, that the Christ would suffer And as the first to rise from the dead, he would proclaim light to our people and to the Gentiles. Now, that's where our hope rests still. On Jesus Christ and him alone. He's the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end, and not just of the universe. Jesus is the beginning and the end of the Bible. The whole book is a dissertation or a master thesis on him. Open it up for yourself. Find out. See what you can see in this new year. You want to have 2020 vision? I mean, it's a joke everyone's making right now. How can I see everything correctly? It's not through this or that corrective lens that I can find at the optometrist. It's by applying this truth that Jesus Christ is the heart and center of all Scripture. Go find it. Go see what the scriptures have to say. Um, In the beginning, there was a creation of man and woman created to be living souls with dominion over the whole earth, created to serve God. And then they fell into sin and death entered the world. But right right there in the third chapter, verses after they fell into sin and hid from God, we get the first promise of the great deliverer, the seed and offspring of the woman Eve. Yeah, he was going to bring salvation. Already talking about Jesus Christ before he had that name. Foreshadowing, fulfillment. Um, Jesus Christ was there from the beginning to the very last page. Whatever is said in this book, in the Bible, has something to do with our Redeemer and Savior, Jesus Christ. You may have some objections to that. What about parts of the Bible that seem to be about other people, about faithful people? men and women. They're about other people, aren't they? Are they really about Jesus Christ? Okay, let's consider that. Don't those passages also speak about the Messiah, the Christ, in whom they put their faith? And don't those people prefigure and foretell of the Messiah, Jesus Christ, to come? Don't we so often see the deliverer in the lives of the people whose stories are told in Scripture? whose accurate, true accounts go ahead and show that they're still failures. So we know that Jesus Christ has not yet stepped onto the scene. What about the genealogies? Whole chapters containing lists of the names of men. You might ask, what what in the world could that have to do with Jesus? And why is it in my Bible? And when I do my annual Bible reading or or whatever Bible plan I have, when I come to the genealogies, can I just skip that part? And you might not read it with the same critical care and concern, but also notice that those genealogies, those lists of names, definitely point to the accuracy and the truthfulness of Scripture, oftentimes leading up to who Jesus was, or different nations explaining Israel's contact with those other peoples. Not only that, we we see that in the Bible, it's not about the history of the whole world. Even that would make it a much larger book. But it's a history of the account of the line that led up to the forecoming Savior, Jesus Christ. 
And then in the New Testament, it's a pointing back of who he was. Look, he came. This really happened. And he saved us from our sins. So even the genealogies attest to Jesus Christ so that those names could be swallowed up in the grace of his name. Okay, what about the Ten Commandments? What about those things? They don't even mention the name of Jesus. What about moral living? Oftentimes the Bible just tells us what to do, and so often we find that we fail. So why was the law given to Moses if, if this was supposed to be about Jesus Christ? Well, here's your next question. Can the law save sinners? And the answer, of course, is no. As Paul tells us in Galatians chapter 3, the law concluded all sinners in their sin, concluded all human beings in sin. And then, in a couple verses later, Paul says the law is a custodian or a schoolmaster that brings us to Christ, that leads us to the conclusion we need someone who will fill this void, someone who will complete what we never could possibly complete, and that was Jesus Christ, the Deliverer. See, we see in the Bible how the Son of God was promised, how he was confirmed to the fathers, how the Savior was prefigured and assorted sacrifices. We see in the Bible how Jesus came on the scene, how he stepped into time as a human being like you and I. It tells us what he did and how. It tells us what he said and how. The Bible tells us how he went to the cross for us and how he opened an empty tomb to show us that life is coming. And then he ascended, and the Bible is still about Jesus Christ to the, to the very end, to the last drops of ink, because at the end of the Bible, there's still a Savior holding out his arms and saying, I'm going to return. And I have a promise for you from the heart and center of me. I'm going to give you eternal life in heaven. Just as Jesus told the Pharisees. If we turn the page to some mystery in the Bible we don't get, we can always apply this fact. Jesus Christ is the heart and center. What was clouded and what was unclear all of a sudden becomes plain to us every time we do that. Remember, you may study the Bible and you may learn a lot of different things. You could learn about customs and how to behave and how to handle yourself at home and abroad. You, you might learn some things about history. You might learn historical figures and places and in time. You might learn geography. You might get a sense of who people were back in those days. But brothers and sisters, you could still miss eternal life for your own soul. You could learn from the Bible how to have long conversations about scripture and doctrine and truth. You could stay up late talking with your friends and family about that. You could go and deliver great big speeches at a gigantic church about things that tell us how to live our happiest life now. But if we haven't found Jesus Christ, if we've learned all those things and yet misunderstood the whole point, then we've missed the eternal life that's meant for us. And this is the Jesus who forgives us for that sin as well, for not reading with him in mind, for maybe reading with ourselves or our own lives, maybe reading with an eye for the excuses so that we can sin the way that we want or live the lives that we wish, rather than seeking Jesus Christ. So don't forget don't forget that even the godless unbelievers of old, of Jesus' time, were searching the scriptures. You can do that just as those unbelievers did. In fact, you must search the scriptures. But find in those scriptures that Jesus Christ is the heart and center. And then you will have a new heart and center because you will have Jesus Christ who forgives all your sins who heals all your diseases, and who holds out the sure hope of everlasting life, now and in eternity. In his name, amen.